Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Finch's Flight. The first of spring has finally arrived, which means the big day is here as well. As Finch stares longingly at all of those red roses he has tucked in the back of his den, he's thinking of what he hopes will be a nice, bright, happy future with one of the lucky cats of his colony. So I know it has been a very long time since our last episode, and part of that is actually because of the poll results. It's quite clear that you guys are just as torn about this as I am, because Griffin and Mango have been vying for the top position basically since the poll went live. Right now though, as of the moment that I'm recording this, I'm going to put the results on the screen for you guys so you can see that Griffin is ahead by just a couple of votes. So Griffin is our winner in this case. It does make me very, very nervous, probably just as nervous as poor Finch is right now. I don't like to disappoint so many of you guys, but I hope you're still looking forward to where the story is going to go. I feel like there is a lot of potential for a story between Griffin and Finch after all, even when it comes to their future family. If you were hoping for Mango, then I hope you aren't too sad. I mean, this isn't the end of their story either. There's still plenty of ways that Finch and Mango can share a bond, and I would love to hear your stories about Finch and Mango too. Maybe some alternate reality where his decision was flipped? That's the beauty of stories like these. They're not confined to just one path, as long as you keep your mind open. And the same goes for Slate as well, of course. I know that she was kind of the underdog in this situation, but she was also very, very near and dear to Finch's heart as one of his most loyal guards. So I'm sure they're still going to make some very good friends in the future too, especially after we got a little bit of a taste of her competitive side in the last episode. So are you ready, Finch? Do you think you're ready to present your offering to Griffin? Oh, he has to be so, so nervous. It's tucked away in his pockets now, though. Maybe right in the folds of his big red scarf. So as we scoot on past Mango's home, paddling by the lake... Oh, and look at this! She even has some lavender growing right outside her garden, too. So it looks like she's still doing well. She's probably really happy that it's the first of spring. It'll be much easier for her to grow all of her flowers in the meantime. But hello, Griffin. I know we often come by with a frog, but we have something else in mind. Oh, you remember that red ruby we are going to give him? Well, Griffin, it might not be a sparkling gemstone, but I hope you'll still accept our ruby red rose. So let's give the red rose to Griffin once and for all. I, um, I've never seen one of these in person before. It's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? I mean, you giving it to me and all? Is this some kind of prank? What do you mean it's not? I mean, yeah, I guess I can take it. You're a cool cat, Finch, and I guess this means we're dating now. Oh, so Griffin did accept it from us. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? I love how he actually thought that we were, like, pranking him at first, because he just can't believe that a cat like Finch would actually think that highly of him. It probably goes to show what sort of relationships he had in his past, too. Nothing like what he and Finch are sharing right now. But let's go ahead and give him his fresh toad for the day. Oh, for me, that's kind of cool, I guess. Because now we need to try to get this heart all the way up to the red. It's going to change colors just like how we would collect stars with the cats when we were becoming friends with them. And once it turns red, that means he should be ready to accept a shiny trinket from us too. Then he might move in and we can start a family. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. I can't wait to see where this story is going to go in the future. Even for kittens, there are so many different ways that we could shape their future together. And I can't wait to craft this new chapter with all of you guys. So even though it might not be what she was hoping for, let's go ahead and give Mango her fresh berries for the day because we are still devoted to being very, very good friends with you. I'm sorry that things didn't work out quite as you had hoped. <laughs> you sure spend a lot of time around me, Finch. Not that I'm complaining, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's good to see that she's still very much open to the idea of being friends. If I'm being honest, I always thought that she probably had eyes for Galen. So maybe as the seasons continue passing by, she'll grow a little bit closer to our resident healer. 
Maybe she'll even get to hear the story about why he ended up in the Feather Colony, because he's still not too willing to share that information with us. Yeah, I bet she's going to get some good tips about growing her little lavender garden. We'll have to make sure that we set up a good area for her too, just like we did for Griffin over at the bottom of the territory. And Slate, poor, poor Slate, who just came into the series a little bit too late, I feel. Maybe she would have had a bigger following if we got to know her better, but I still feel like she's going to make an excellent friend too. There is nothing wrong with being different. That's what my parents always told me and I think I've taken it to heart. Some cats will be better at you than some things and that's just how the world is. But there's something you can do that they can't and the world needs you to use your unique gift. Yeah, Slate always has some of the wisest words to say. I've always figured that she's probably related to Claudius in some way. And in the previous episode, I did mention that maybe Claudius was her father. So maybe he's the one instilling those great words of wisdom on her. Hello, my leash. I have discovered a rabbit, which I would for you to have. Oh, thank you, Claudius. Did you just pick this up from, like, right underneath our feet? I swear we just ate a bunny and then he shoved one right back into our paws. Maybe he wants us to give it a slate? I'm flattered. You certainly know what I like. Yeah, and they both have a love for bunnies, too, which is quite suspicious if you ask me. That was part of the reason why Finch always loved Claudius so much, because he did remind him of his father, too. Oh, Starling, have you heard the news? Your brother is now one step closer to becoming a married cat. Finch, didn't you tell me the other day you wanted a Valerian? Anyway, I got you one. Hope you like it. Well, thank you, Starling. That'll help us out quite a bit as we head out into the forest. We do have a little bit of ground to cover after all, since we spent so much time inside the Feather Colony. But before we leave, Griffin, I do want to talk to you again, just to see if he has anything in his pockets. You don't think it's embarrassing hanging out together, do you? Good. I'm trying, but it's hard sometimes. What do you think the other cats think of us? Griffin, don't you worry. I know that was one of the things that was always high on his mind. He didn't like the idea of other cats spreading rumors, I guess. And that's probably also because of wherever he came from in his past. He's a very, very secretive cat. And it makes me wonder if maybe he just had a really bad relationship in the past. Maybe whoever is looking for him used to be someone that he thought very highly of too. And he didn't want to put himself back in that position again. So despite how he clearly had eyes for Finch, he just didn't want to risk getting too close. But today, I think we're going to go on the hunt for frogs. We're going to go down to the water side if possible. It's nice to see so many bunnies hopping around. That'll be great for our food stores. But yeah, I really, really want to stock up on frogs if we can. Frogs and herbs for all of the future battles in our path. Because now the stakes are higher than ever before. Ooh, there we go, there's our very first frog. Hopping up the cliffs, maybe trying to take a little dip inside the ponds up in the highlands. But it's coming home with us now. Yeah, if we can make a little froggy pile right in the back of our den too, I'm sure that Griffin would really, really appreciate all the fresh snacks. I believe the licorice root should also be in season now. And if you guys remember, one of the things that Finch really loved to do when he was little was just build forts out of licorice roots for all of his frogs. He still does partake in that pastime every now and then. Maybe not as much as when he was a kitten inside Penny's den. But we know Finch, leader or not, he is still one big kitten at heart. Let's go ahead and use some of the lavender that we gathered to, well, take over this tile, I guess. Just enough for us to grab that catnip so we should be able to sell that off to Starling. We actually need to buy him one of those color-changing tokens, too. Oh, hello, Brownie. When I see you over there, were you hiding in the bushes? Are you out on patrol today, Finch? Well, kind of. We're patrolling out here for the frogs and the toads, and not much else at the moment. Though we do have that battle right below us, so maybe we should check it out. I guess for now I'm actually going to leave the butterflies over here, the little orange ladybug that we caught as well. We'll come back for these little treasures in the future, but I think the licorice roots would be a little bit more important to Finch right now. Alright, so we should be all set and prepared to go into the Mystic Colony battle down here. 
We'll use our deep cut skill, but honestly, I don't think Finch is going to have too much trouble. He has confidence for days now. Now that he finally told Griffin how he feels, so he feels like he could take on an entire army on his own. Maybe not the best way to be looking at this battle, but there's only two cats remaining, and something tells me that they're probably quite weak. Oh, do we have any snake lilies? Only the one? All right, we should probably save that then. Yeah, good thing we didn't use it. We only had to slap that cat one last time, and we would have wasted the entire precious snake lily. That would not make Griffin too happy with us, that's for sure. Oh, there is so much prey in the forest, though. I wonder if this is a little blessing from the forest guardian. Maybe they're also very, very impressed with Finch for following his heart. We've already found three frogs, so let's go ahead and munch on another one of our trusty little bunnies. That way we'll be nice and full for the last leg of this journey. We're doing pretty good so far, just following the pathway toward the swamplands. So I guess we might as well continue. We'll go ahead and drop down some more of that lavender right here, just to break into their territory a little bit more. That way it should be safer for us to find even more frogs in the future. Yeah, I do remember seeing quite a few of them hopping around these parts. Probably because they just love frolicking around in the mud. I don't think we've ever tried giving anybody inside the Mystic Colony frogs, though. Do you think maybe somebody in there would also really enjoy them as gifts? I wonder. I mean, you would think it must be a staple of their diet because there are just so many around here. Oh no, that one got away from you. Ooh, but it looks like there's a toad up here instead. Oh no. Oh, we haven't caught a toad yet. But if it's just minding its own business inside those muddy waters... There we go. Now we can pounce. It didn't even see us coming. So let's see. Finch unfortunately can't upgrade any of his skills right now, but he has quite a few mews in his pocket. So I think as we return back home, after scooping up this one last toad, we'll go ahead and warp straight back to the den, and when he wakes up in the morning, We'll see if maybe Coco could spare us another one of those color-changing tokens. I definitely want to make sure that Starling is getting his change of coat for the season. I'm not really sure what I'm going to give him this time. Oh, and it sounds like it's raining today, too. Well, you know, that might actually be the perfect occasion for us to continue our frog hunting adventures. I think we'll give him two toads and one of the frogs. So let's go ahead and leave the extra frogs in the back of our den. Right up here next to the extra red roses and next to our little sapphire as well. Maybe we could even take a few into the mines next time we go inside. Next time we're up for the adventure. Next time we're looking to actually get Griffin his red ruby. Something tells me that he probably appreciates the one that we gave him though. The ruby red rose instead. It is certainly much more special than any shiny gemstone would be. Hello, Galen. How are you doing today on this very, very wet and soggy morning? Is that you, Finch? Perhaps you can ponder with me the function of fog. Why must this mist exist? Well, I'm sure it's going to help all of your herbs. And I'm sure it's going to help mangoes and lavender as well. All of this rain must be doing wonders for the gardens. It's a great day for spending some time with a friend. What's your plans for today? Oh, see, she is still very, very happy to be Finch's friend, despite everything, despite what might be a little bit of a broken heart that she's nursing. She is still very comfortable with his decision. I thought I might go out and do some hunting. I'm starting to run low on prey, but that should be easy to fix. Oh, Mango, you should have told us because we have plenty of prey in our pockets. Maybe we should drop off a couple of mice over here so she doesn't feel too hungry. We'll just pile this right next to your garden so you'll have plenty of snacks to munch on, okay? We don't want anybody going hungry inside the feather colony. That's part of the leader's duty, after all, to make sure everybody is happy and healthy. So yeah, since we can give the cats three gifts a day, we better make sure that we're giving Griffin plenty of frogs and plenty of those toads. Anything to get those heart points up a little bit faster? Maybe we'll even see the first heart change today? Nope, it's still white, unfortunately. 
but this relationship is brand new, so we can't expect things to move too fast. Perfect day to stalk some birds. Their eyesight can't see through the fog very easily. Yeah, Griffin always knows exactly what Finch's plans are. He actually hasn't done too much bird hunting, though, in general. It's a great way to connect him to his past, but these days he just prefers his frogs. Probably not what you want to hear, huh, Starling? Oh, another gift from you? Oh, the tiger butterfly. Did you hear that we actually put that aside? We plopped that down next to the swamplands, and it's not because we don't appreciate your gift, of course. It's only because we need a little bit of extra room in our pockets. I'm pretty sure that he was the one who gave us the butterflies before, right? It seems like he always has some extra little insects to spare for his brother. But we have catnip to give you this time. I suppose we could even think about maybe selling off our bass and our field mice just for the extra muse. Now that it's the new season, and now that Finch is starting his journey with Griffin, we are going to want to think about how we're going to pay for all of those den upgrades next. We desperately, desperately need to make sure that we make a garden for him. If he's going to move in, then we need to make sure he can grow his snake lilies. But let's go ahead and offer this right up to Starling, and we'll see if we have any special colors in here that we could give him. Oh, we have the pumpkin color! We chose Calico Mania before, and Black Tabby, of course, is the one that Finch uses when he's disguising himself to go sneaking into the Mountain Domain. We could use the special Kickstarter color. Maybe? I think that's one of the only ones we haven't chosen. I'm not sure if we gave him the Bengal color before. Yeah, green for a nice, fresh, green start in the springtime. Oh, that looks very, very exotic, Starling. Look at that beautiful coat. Oh my gosh, and with those bright pink eyes, too. You are looking fabulous, Starling. You are going to be the talk of the entire colony. Slate is probably going to want to get a closer look, too. It's just a lovely day, don't you think? Oh, I guess Slate likes the rain, then. Not many cats would consider this to be a lovely day. What's with this fog, anyway? I heard a long time ago that cats can go missing in a heavy fog. And that's why I'm staying as close to home as possible all day. Can't be too careful. Oh, I guess she changed her mind then? Going back and forth here, one minute it's a lovely day, and the next minute she's worried about getting lost in the fog? Well, I guess we can cross her off our list then. It sounds like she's not going to be helping us out in any battles today. And certainly not helping us hunt down any frogs. But we'll leave you with your rabbit so you'll be nice and full. And let's see how Claudius is doing too. I've considered training up a retinue of stealth-based warriors. A group of cats who can stalk through the fog undetected. What do you think of my idea, my liege? Oh, Claudius, I love it. Oh, that would be the perfect way for us to sneak deeper into mountain cat territory. In fact, it looks like they might be retaliating a little bit. It looks like they might be trying to do just the same. So as we come on over here, over to this side of the highlands today to scoop up our licorice roots. I know that there is another one of those catnip plants around here too, and I'm sure it's grown back today. So before we stop for our lunch, let's grab this thing as well. Then I suppose we could munch on one of our rabbits again. It seems like rabbits are definitely the food of the day. Normally, Finch prefers to just stick with the berries and the frogs, but the rabbits have really been keeping his belly full. And we need to make sure that he's prepared to fight the mountain domain. Oh, I almost forgot. We upgraded our foraging skill to the max, so now we can see where the herbs are on our mini-map. I wasn't even looking at that all day long. Oh, I can't wait until we're fully upgraded and hunting too, because then we'll be able to see the prey on the mini-map as well. That's what Penny had managed to do, and it helped her avoid mistakes, so no prey would be able to escape. Well, let's go ahead and use one of our Valerian plants this time, before we go into this battle. We'll hold off on the Snake Lily just to see what sort of battle we're up against. If there's a lot of cats here where we might need an extra little punch. Honestly, there's not that many. It seems like we have a good amount of guards on our side too. So we might be able to take them with a few of our guards to spare. There we go, Tom and Silver. You guys managed to help us save the day? Oh, these are dark times for all the colonies. 
Oh, Silver, have you heard something? A big juicy trout would be perfect right now. Okay, okay, you can definitely see the difference in our guards right here. Silver's all serious. He's heard some strange omen, perhaps from the oracle herself. And Tom is just like, you know, I could really go for a trout. I am very, very hungry after all of those tough battles. I still wish that we could give our guards some special things. Oh, it looks like Torn might be going after that bunny. Oh, we were so close. I think he may have taken some Valerian too because he is very, very fast. Well, I'm going to lead you straight up here to our other guards. If they're still around, there they are. Oh, Silver is charging in to help us. Thank you very much, guys. If we find anybody else out here, I'm going to do that same thing and bring them straight to your paws. So far it looks... Oh, I was going to say it looked much more quiet. Oh no, it sounds like they're getting hurt too. Oh, there are tons of mountain cats out here today. Will we grab their attention? Let's see if hopefully Tom and Silver are still around. Elaine and Luna are much, much slower. So at least we don't have to worry about them catching up to us like the other cats. Oh no, it looks like Hale may have taken out our guards. Oh my goodness. Or maybe it was you? Okay, I think it might be time for us to use our snake lily this time. We need to make sure that we're taking a little bit of extra energy off of these cats. Otherwise, they are going to destroy poor Finch. I guess we overstayed our welcome here. Usually I don't stick around these places too long after the battles. But on that same note, every single one of these cats that we defeat, we should be gaining a little bit more reputation in this area. A little bit more influence over the mountains territory. Finch is getting pretty hurt though, so we are going to have to be careful as we take another swipe at Hale. We don't want today to end in a disaster after all. Finch has finally confessed his feelings. He doesn't need to wake up bleary and confused inside Galen's den. I think we should be good now. And look how much influence we have in the Highland West. Yeah, I'd say that was a pretty good use of our time. It didn't give us too many of those frogs, but at least we're getting closer to taking over the mountain's territory. Pretty soon the highlands will be unstoppable again. If we are going to humor the idea of kittens between Finch and Griffin, then we really need to make sure that we're expanding our territory too. When Penny started her new chapter with Scout, she increased the forest colony's control by miles. Oh, and our first raspberries of the season! Oh, Mango is going to be so happy to see those! We'll have to bring her some tomorrow. We'll tuck those away in the back of our den to save them for a special little breakfast treat. But yeah, it was something that Penny was very, very concerned with. Just making sure that her kittens had a nice wide space to roam. A nice, safe space, I guess I should say. Somewhere where she knew that her guards would always be watching because she didn't want her kittens to be stolen away. Finch has never been quite as skilled as taking control of the land as his mother was but I think he's going to really step up his game now. Now that ideas of a big happy family aren't quite so far out of reach. Now that they feel a little bit more real than they did before. Still haven't seen any frogs today though, so I think it might be a bust. I think it might be time for Finch to return home. He has had a pretty big eventful day anyways, so I feel like he deserves a little bit of a rest now. We'll have him curl up inside his bed now that he's missing one of his red roses. So I hope you guys are just as excited for the future as I am. And I hope that those of you who had different ideas in mind aren't too upset. I know it can stink to get invested in a part of the story that never happens, but like I said before, feel free to share your ideas for Finch's adventure. You guys always give me so much inspiration. I love reading your stories. And it would make my day to see your take on everything that happened today. Or maybe even everything that didn't happen today. Or everything that could have happened in some distant alternate reality. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!